My wargaming board has been constructed and this middle section is missing a major component. Something that can be impactful, aesthetically pleasing, and of course simple to create. A template may just be the component that brings all of this together. Hello folks, and welcome to Dice Chatter. It may be a bit obvious, but I want a bridge to fill this gap on my wargaming board. And I figure, why not create a simple template to follow? Something that looks elementary at first, though the more we think with the creative side of our brain, the options become overwhelming. And I'd argue that is a good thing. For your own free template, check out the description for the PDF download, share it everywhere your little heart desires. Of course, you can follow along with me and create the exact same bridge but I encourage you to download this template and take these arches, supports, or tees and create something out of this world. And speaking of tees, I need to thank Into the AM once again for providing these wonderful graphic shirts. Today I have on this soft and comfy android looking guy inspired by some of Da Vinci's famous work. Get unique handcrafted tees like this and many more using the link below or use the code DICECHATTER at checkout to save some cold hard cash. And even better, your purchases even help support the channel so that I can continue to build terrain and film some awesome battle reports. Thank you into the AM and back to the build. I made this template. And today I plan on showing you one of the multitudes of ways we can take this piece of paper and turn it into a proper supporting structure. I personally find typical computer paper is a bit too flimsy for terrain building, so I cut everything out and glue it down onto some construction paper. A cereal box, chipboard, or even some foam board would also suffice. I just simply used what I had lying around. You'll notice by now that the template I have provided is starting to take shape as I cut and glue all these pieces together. The intention of this design was to perfectly fit my board and the foam bricks I use in all of my builds, as well as be able to function well with different sized miniatures on the tabletop. Though I don't see why you couldn't add or remove a few details from the original design. I know I am building a bridge for this video, but I could see a plethora of other options to create. Assembling a short, stumpy bridge could be quite easy. Easy. Also, these are fantastic arches that give me some sort of Roman aqueduct sort of vibes. So while I mishmash all of these templates together, creating curves and interesting archways, we finally have our foundation. It may not be much at this moment, but you can really see the templates coming together. And even better, my Frostgrave miniatures fit perfectly under this bridge because a little bit of planning goes a long way. This is where my plans and forethought ended. I knew I wanted to use my A, B, and C bricks for this terrain build, but I was very unsure of how I wanted the layout to look. So while I increase my foam brick supply, I took that time thinking about the aesthetics of the bridge. I want it to be ruined, but not aggressively. It still needs to be able to work and function on the tabletop. Also, I want it to mesh and blend a bit with my wargaming board, though it still needs to look a bit more organized. I haven't spent a bit of time laying down unglued bricks, imagining what orientation or design best fits my unique vision, but I have to start making some indefinite decisions. I figured starting at the bottom would be best. Throughout this creation, you'll see me either use PVA glue or some hot glue to keep these bricks in place. Making a typical and simple overlapping brick design at the base seemed like a good option for me. It's easy to create and not much thought needs to go into the process. This led me to thinking what to do about the interior arches. I decided to go with even a more simple theme here. I didn't want too many foam bricks jutting out on the interior underside, mainly because I thought it may look a bit off and when I am pushing some models on through underneath this bridge I don't want to smash them and do some unsuspecting stones. I found a pattern I liked and repeated this under the walkable platform. The upper part of the outer walls took a bit more thinking starting with the arch leading up to our A brick keystone. I used a typical brick laying method here as well and I added some stones that jut out and create another dimension to this craft. It's these little details that I enjoy the most that have the possibility to turn your build from basic to extraordinary. The sidewalls and the archway itself are looking pretty awesome. These big and small models seem to fit pretty well, even after adding in the foam bricks. It's nice to know my measurements, well, were correct. 
For the road atop of the bridge, I wanted to add in a few simple looking battlements along the edge of the creation. Something that adds a bit of visual interest as well as a bit of cover for those smaller sized miniatures. But I realized I had a problem. I need to figure out what the hell I'm doing with the two ends of the bridge. How will it connect and flow with my board? The solution for me was to add in a few of those octagon stone pillars on each end, showing that this bridge was built with the environment around it in mind. These octagon pillars are just hot glued in place and cut to fit and function on the tabletop. And a hobby knife as well as a foil ball do a good job portraying old walked upon stones when slashed and pressed into the foam. The bridge itself looks a bit odd, not resting on the wargaming board, but I keep on assuring myself it'll make a bit more sense once the road is filled in. Oh, and the hole I cut into the walkway, this needs to be addressed as well. Filling the hole with a bunch of A and B bricks I thought was a neat idea to help portray a way more old and ruined feel. A bit later in the build, we'll be covering this area of rough terrain, but I don't see why one couldn't just leave it ruined like this. Like I said, it could be used for rough terrain. For the final touches on this walkway, we dip into the sea brick container and start slapping down all of these varied rectangles. It is oddly satisfying creating a structure like this, laying down each individual brick with purpose and intent. And as long as the painting goes well, I can see myself having having a new favorite tabletop terrain build. It's always important to give these bricks a good black prime and a zenithal highlight of white from above. I don't know if the zenithal highlight is really needed on a build like this. It's going to be covered in spackle and lots of layers of paint, though I do enjoy it visually, and I feel it helps give me a bit of perspective while I paint. We can maybe experiment with this idea some other time. Anywho, for the colors of the bridge, I wanted it to closely match the board, so we are going with a bunch of brown colors. But some of you may even remember these colorful stone squares. So far, these have been some lovely tools in helping me decide colorful paint schemes. And with these in mind, I want to spice up this build compared to my usual brown creations. That is why I left a bit of the original prime and zenithal show through on these smaller rectangular sections. So let's ditch the brown paints for a moment and add a bit of vibrant color. Other than the bit of fun and pop that these colors add to the bridge, they are also fantastic visual markers that can be noted and pointed out on the tabletop. Out of all these colors, I think the blue looks the most striking. But of course, after all of our paints dry, we start to fill in all the gaps with some spackle. The joint compound does exactly what you want it to do in this situation, and when given a light touch of water, we can really push the spackle into all the nooks and crannies of the bricks on this bridge. I did decide to keep the top mostly barren of spackle, but you'll see in a moment why I did this. The key with spackle is to wipe away any of the excess that sits atop these stone bricks with some dry paper towel. A little of this cheap craft paint will splotch off a bit when using spackle, but don't you worry, it's all a part of the process. For the top of the bridge, I wanted it to closely reflect the wargaming board itself, so I went with some play sand. Pouring out the sand, soaking a bit of it in some IPA alcohol, and then adding a lovely water and PVA glue mixture really does the trick. I do also go over everything a second time just to really make sure everything sets and glues in place. And of course, give it plenty of time to dry. Though I figure, in the meantime, we can also grab a few skulls and plop them down where it might look nice. And why not help cover the hole in the road with a few coffee stir sticks, really selling the idea that there are people currently settling in this land, walking across the bridge of those of an ancient past. Enough of my ramblings. We need to turn this super bright bridge into an old and crusty thing it should be. I like to use some army painter washes and run them through the airbrush. I don't see why a standard brush couldn't get you relatively similar results, and I really enjoy how everything looks after a few passes of the airbrush. The spackle tones down to a more realistic shade, and it helps blend all of these colors together. After we do a quick and extremely light dry brush of a cream color, we add in a few grass tufts here and there, maybe a bit of local graffiti, and we can call this bridge complete. I think this may be one of my favorite terrain pieces as of late. Of course, I love my modular wargaming board it sits upon, but a bridge, it's just so... satisfying. This one in particular for a couple reasons. 
First off, I made a template, and it worked. It'll be neat to see what else I use this for, and I'm excited to see what other folks conjure up as well. And number two, it adds a dynamic element to the table, one that I have had very little of in my tabletop games. It is a multi-layered element that adds to the decision-making process. A fancy way of stating, it's three-dimensional, which can make a gamer think. Does one dare cross the bridge and risk taking on a volley of arrows from archers hiding in the distance? Or maybe we can dip below the fray and take a safer yet longer path to the other side. I'm sure my wonderful patrons would make the right decision, and I do appreciate their support. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.